here is a quick and dirty tutorial if you actually don't know how to make AN lines, it's super easy. One PTFE AN line. There you go. And now these are ran next to each other. We're gonna test to see if this is working. And, hmm, maybe not. Looks like I gotta, uh, I gotta replace the pump. I guess let's just jump to when I have another pump to put in here. Three weeks later. So the solution to our problems have finally arrived. This is the power steering controller from Hangtight. This is going to allow us to run our Mazda power steering pump because this only works with a CAN signal. It will not have a limp mode. If it does not have a CAN signal, it just straight up won't turn on. So that solution is a module that sends all the CAN signals to our power steering pump. And it also gives us a little bit of controllability for this guy in either allowing us to control the speed of the pump through a potentiometer or like the normal cars work, either off of engine speed or wheel speed by sending a PWM signal to the controller, which then sends the signal to the pump. So this wiring is ultra easy. It's 12 volts ground, the CAN bus, and then it has its own connector for the potentiometer or the control from your ECU, however you wanna go about it. For this video, we're just going to be doing the potentiometer so that we can get this thing up and running and make sure it works. And at a later date, we'll go into the control for the ECU. Now, with all this being said, my ideal situation is to not have something like this, and that's to let the ECU run everything on its own. So at a later date, again, we're going to be investigating the signals and stuff that this sends out for our Mazda power steering pump. And then we're just going to build that into the Mega Squared ECU since the Mega Squared ECU allows us to run any type of CAN network. Now, mounting for this thing will be temporary, as is pretty much everything on this build uh, at this point in time. Temporary is becoming more and more permanent as time goes on. However, I want to put this where all the electronics are going to be behind the seats. So we will move this whenever we move our battery and our ECU and everything behind the seats. So in the meantime, I'm going to be running a length of wire that's going to be zip tied. It's going to be wrapped around itself and zip tied, just like with the ECU. That way I don't have to remake all the lines again, re-terminate them and everything, and I can just cut them, solder them together, and that'll be that. Speaking of control, these are the potentiometers that we're going to be using. They are 1000 ohm pots. These are exactly what we need in order to have our control today. Uh, the way that we're going to be doing this is we have to wire signal, ground, and Five. volts. And then, honestly, I think I'm just going to wrap the wires and heat shrink everything together. I do want to design a little holder for this. Granted, there's probably something on Thingiverse for me to be able to 3D print. And then we'll have like a more permanent option. This will always be overridden by any PWM signal, however. So say the car is on but not running, we can use the potentiometer to adjust the speed here, once we turn the car on, the car will overtake it. And if we make any adjustments here, it'll change it until it gets another signal from the car. So it all depends on how frequently your car is outputting it, if the potentiometer will still continue to work. The other thing you can do is you can put a switch in line between that PWM signal and the controller itself. That way you can switch whenever you're going to be doing the potentiometer or you're gonna let the car take over. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the install and get this thing running. It's taking so long.
since I'm complicated, I want to have the twisted pairs still be twisted pairs. So we're going to set up the plug on the vise, like a clamp over here. And I'm going to use the drill to twist them to a certain point, And then I'm going to wrap them. We're going to see how well this works. <laughs> wire here that if I ever need to run another can line uh, I have it pre-made and that's how I'm gonna look at this I'm gonna look at it as a positive note I made extra because this took way too long it took about three times as long as I thought it was gonna take done all right let's get this thing wired up I'm actually just gonna put it in the car <laughs> So the way we're going to get into the cabin is through this grommet just under our master cylinder reservoir. It's legit like right in this corner. I'm gonna go ahead, take a pick, poke a little hole, and that should be more than enough for us to be able to put these through. And then I will wrap the end with electrical tape just before I pull it through. And I'm just gonna like kind of push it up against the edge. Hopefully, hopefully, that'll keep it watertight. Granted, with all the dust and stuff that's in this area, I don't think this sees much water, but it can, which is the issue. So hopefully that will hold, but we're going to come in there. We're gonna go just behind the little fuse box, run up here and go right in there. Wires here. Let's see if I can pull this through now. Yep. Alrighty, there we go. Woo. Got the wires in the cabin. Oh dear lord, I don't think we gotta worry about water coming in here at all. Crazy thing is, I think this was just about enough. This is gonna be able to reach just to the other side of the car and that is it, no further. Crazy. As you can see, this is all that I have left of the slack. So we're gonna zip tie this and we're gonna call that a day, but it is officially in its home. So that takes care of this plug for the harness. Now we need to do this plug, which is, is gonna be 12 volt ground, the potentiometer signal, 
And as well as that, you can also put the PWM signal here. I'm just gonna leave it for now, and then we'll wire that in at a later date. All right, so I have gotten most of the wiring done, but I want to show you guys real quick. So with this kit, you're gonna get a couple of plugs, as well as pins, and this little securing tab doodly guy here. And essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all the wires that we just got done wiring up, as well as two additional wires, one for 12 volt ignition, one for 12 volt ground. And then we are going to take them and put them in the corresponding pins and holes. So you can see here, this is the wiring diagram. It tells you what pins go where. And right now we're gonna do the three pin connector. So we can see pin one is can high, pin two is can low, and then pin three is the 12 volt out for the switch signal for the pump itself. Now, unfortunately, I have no idea which one is high and which one is low, and I can't really find any diagrams on it, at least none that have the color codes on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on this guy here. So this here is the red LED that's on the back of the unit, and if it fast blinks, that means I'll have them wired backwards. So then we'll just go in and we will reverse them. But for now, all we got to do is we need to follow that diagram as before, where it says position one is can high, two is can low, three is signal on. So following with that order, this one here that's separate from the twisted pair is going to go in position three. And there are numbers on the back here that we can follow. So position three is this last one here. So I'm going to take this and push it in its hole. Now I'm using silicone wires here, so there's zero integrity. So I have to use a pick to finish pushing it in. And basically I'm just gonna push till I hear a click. There we go. And then I'm gonna pull back on it a little bit. And I'm just gonna follow through with that. So with can one being high, I wired the red to the red and the white to the white. I'm gonna assume that red is high, white is low. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna wire one in there and then two in here so we're going to do this one first i'm pretty sure this comes out i never actually tried to pull it out yeah it does come out so <laughs> pull this out just to make your life a little easier and then push this pin up in there until i hear the click there we go and then just do the same thing for the red one here and now i can just pull these guys back and push this up All right, and now we're still back up. So from here, what we want to do is we're going to use this guy and this will push everything into alignment, but I screwed it up and my one pin is way off because I accidentally bent the back of it. So we're going to pull this back out and I'm going to fix that. Looks like it's partially just the wire. So I am going to put this in and we're just going to click it down. There we go. Now all the pins are in there and secure. I'm going to pull this up and put it back and just like that we have a full connector and then we have two so now all I got to do is plug this up give it a test if not I'll redo all that take a pair of pliers and pull this little orange pin out and swap those around and once I get those swapped we should be able to test this out so at this time I actually don't have like an add a fuse or anything I do have this one that I have for my mirror However, it's not really hooked up to anything right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap into this and we'll give it its own in the future. So all I'm going to do is go ahead and slide this wire in here and we'll do the same thing for this guy and just use the pliers to press down. Now what we can do is we can check resistance just to make sure it has an actual good connection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this over to function until I see ohms. And then I want to see that number as low as possible. So right now it looks like it's 0.6 ohms, which is great. That's very little to no resistance. So there we go. We got that put in there. Now I just got to hook up the ground and we'll get this thing tested. We got everything plugged up. This is the LED that we're going to be watching. We're going to be looking for a fast blink. Plug that into there. 
plug this guy in. There we go. Everything's plugged in. I'm going to go hit the breaker for the power steering pump. Breaker for the power steering pump is on. Everything's plugged up. Now we just got to turn the key, watch that LED, and listen. I will be holding this potentiometer. Blinking red. Actually don't know what blinking red means. So it says slow blink, no pump detected. Which is weird. Alright, so I'm going to turn this there. We're going to kill this. I'm going to double check the wiring to the pump. 0.6 ohms. <sighs> as much as I wanted to end this video with this pump functioning, I just don't think it's going to happen. I need to try and get a new pump. So we're going to come back to this at a later date. Everything's plumbed up. Everything's hooked up. I might even take this out, take it home, see if I can crack it open and possibly fix something. I don't know, because I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm just gonna be poking and prodding around. But what I do know is that we will be coming back to this as soon as I can either fix this or get a new pump. So without further ado, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking around, hanging out and waiting for these videos to finally come back up. I wanna get back into a regular upload schedule again here soon. I mean, we got body work, we got body work. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, it's just body work and all cosmetic stuff. We gotta get the car inspected so we can get it technically road legal, and then we can go ahead and switch back to the engine stuff to get the turbo and everything plumbed up. As, as of now, the wastegate is blocked off for my emissions, and the wastegate is not plumbed into any of the exhaust system. So with all the welding and stuff that I would have to do, that would be a couple more weeks before I would actually have a video for that without even touching anything else on the car. So, yeah. If you like the video, please do hit the like down below. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon right next to the sub so you get notified whenever I drop new videos, if you click all as well as if you want to support me a little bit more go ahead and head over to bringmeacoffee.com slash fail rpm but as always I want to thank you guys again for watching peace out and i'll see you in the next one